and you can check your answers now on the kidney. Temperature control. Body temperature is monitored in the brain, in a part of the brain which is known as the thermoregulatory centre. Now this monitors the temperature of blood flowing through the brain, so this monitors your core temperature. But don't forget you also have, as part of your nervous system, temperature receptors in the skin which detect the skin temperature. And these receptors will send impulses to the thermoregulatory centre as well. Now, if we get hot, one of the things that our body does is to sweat more because sweating helps to cool the body. And if this is the case, then we have to drink more water to replace the water lost. Now, if you get very hot or if you're exercising a lot, then some people like to drink sports drinks. Now, these contain water, sugar and irons. The sugar replaces those sugars that have been used up in respiration while you've been exercising. The water replaces the fluid that you've lost as sweat. And because we excrete ions in sweat, then these drinks can contain ions as well to replace those that are lost in sweat. Now, these must be replaced because otherwise if the iron water balance of the body is disturbed, then this can affect the function of all your cells. If you're doing higher tier, then you have to know exactly how the blood vessels respond with changes in temperature. Now, if you're too hot, then the blood vessels supplying your skin capillaries dilate or widen. This allows more blood to flow near the surface of the skin, which allows more heat to be lost. And also your sweat glands can react by releasing more sweat because it's the evaporation of sweat which cools the body. Notice the underlined words there. It's the blood vessels supplying the skin capillaries that dilate, not the skin capillaries themselves. If you're too cold, the blood vessels supplying the skin capillaries constrict, which means that less blood flows near the surface of the skin so less heat is lost. Remember, it's the blood that transports heat around your body. Also, your muscles can shiver. Now, shivering means that more energy is needed from respiration for the contractions of your muscles, and heat is released by respiration. Now, about 70% of students say that the blood vessels move to the surface. Now, that's just not true. Your blood vessels don't move around in your body. They stay where they are. And about 70% of students say that the capillaries contract or relax. Now, capillaries don't have muscle in their walls, so they can't do anything like that. It's not true. So don't fall into this trap. The blood vessels supplying the skin capillaries contract or relax. Nothing moves around and the capillaries are pretty inert, actually. They don't do very much at all. Don't make those mistakes. Be really careful about your language here. It's an easy four mark answer if you get that wording right. So this is what happens if you're too hot. The blood vessels supplying your skin capillaries dilate. So more blood flows through those capillaries, which are near the surface of the skin so more heat is lost by radiation. If you're too cold, the blood vessels supplying the skin capillaries constrict, so less blood flows near the surface, so less heat is lost by radiation. Sugar control Your blood glucose concentration is monitored and controlled by the pancreas. Now the pancreas, among other things, releases insulin, which is a hormone. And this has the effect of allowing glucose to move into cells from the bloodstream. So this lowers the blood glucose concentration. 
Now this is how it works. The pancreas detects a rise in blood glucose, for example if you've just had a meal. So it releases insulin, so the glucose moves into the cells and your blood glucose drops. If you're doing higher tier, the pancreas also produces glucagon. This is another hormone. Now glucagon is released when your blood glucose drops too low and it converts a carbohydrate called glycogen into glucose. Now when we have too much glucose in the bloodstream it's stored as glycogen and when our blood glucose drops too low then that glycogen is converted back into glucose. So more glucose is released into the blood. Now glycogen is an insoluble carbohydrate and it's how we store our carbohydrate. Now examiners are pretty forgiving of spelling mistakes but there are a few spellings in biology which you have to get right and you can't hybridize glucagon and glycogen. They sound very similar and it's very confusing. Glucagon is the hormone you can remember that because it's got O-N in it, like hormones got O-N in it, glucagon, hormone. And glycogen is the carbohydrate, that's our carbohydrate store. You can't hybridize them, you can't call it glucagon or glycogon. The examiner won't be fooled, he will know that you can't remember which one it is and you're just chancing your arm. So get those spellings right, glucagon is the hormone and glycogen is the carbohydrate. Type 1 diabetes is a disease in which a person's pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin and this means that their blood glucose concentration can rise too high. It can actually get dangerously high and put them in a coma. So diabetics have to watch what they eat now, they have to be careful about what type of carbohydrates they eat. You can see here on this graph, it shows what happens to our blood glucose levels when we eat different types of bread. White bread is refined carbohydrate. It's digested and absorbed rapidly, which means that our blood glucose climbs rapidly and we have a higher peak. Whereas brown bread is digested and absorbed more slowly. So the blood glucose climbs more slowly and it has a lower peak. So brown bread will be better for diabetics because their blood glucose doesn't climb as high. So what can diabetics do to control their condition? Well, they can inject insulin. They can monitor their blood glucose levels with a little tiny pinprick. They can test a tiny drop of blood and give themselves an injection if their glucose rises too high. By paying attention to their diet, they can avoid sugary foods. They can be careful what type of carbohydrates they eat. They can choose those which are digested and absorbed more slowly. So their blood glucose rises only slowly, as we just saw in that graph. And exercise is very important too for a diabetic because if you exercise, you respire more. So this uses up glucose. So that will also help to keep your blood glucose lower. Okay, test yourself on homeostasis then.